Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It is a pleasure to welcome you to this in-depth lecture as part of the 7th E-ISRA Congress International Edition, where we will explore a topic that everyone talks about, but very few actually practice neuroaxial sonography. I do not intend to speak at length about the well-known virtues of ultrasound, but rather to share with you, as visually and practically possible, how to approach the ultrasound examination of the neuroaxis. This is not meant to be an exhaustive review of interventional techniques within this region, but instead an opportunity to establish solid foundational principles that will help us optimize our sonographic assessment of this complex anatomical structure. Due to the length of the presentation, we have decided to divide it into four parts, allowing for a more focused and detailed study of each section. The first section will address the general principles underlying the ultrasound assessment of the neuroaxis, establishing the conceptual framework necessary for accurate interpretation. The second part will focus on the characteristic sonographic patterns of the lumbar spine. The third section will explore the scanning criteria for the thoracic spine. Finally, the fourth part will be dedicated to the ultrasound evaluation patterns of the cervical spine. Let's start with the principal concepts we must know about ultrasound spine examination. Since its adoption across various medical specialties, Ultrasonography has become the gold standard for soft tissue procedures, both for diagnostic evaluation and interventional applications. However, its use in assessing osseous structures remains a considerable challenge. The inability of ultrasound waves to penetrate bone represents a fundamental limitation in certain anatomical regions. The central nervous system, particularly the spinal cord, is encased within a protective bony framework, the spine. This structure not only facilitates trunk mobility and transmits forces to the limbs, but also serves as a safeguard against potential spinal injuries. Therefore, if our potential targets are surrounded by a bony shield, ultrasound waves will be unable to penetrate it, leaving these structures concealed beneath the acoustic shadows generated by the ultrasound. Each bony prominence of the vertebrae will produce a characteristic acoustic shadow. Therefore, we must be able to determine the position of our ultrasound probe based on the shadows and gaps observed on the screen. Although neuroaxis ultrasonography is not a recent advancement, its clinical application remains relatively underutilized. Numerous published studies, as shown on the screen, provide comprehensive descriptions of the distinct sonographic patterns that can be observed when assessing the neuroaxis. These studies serve as valuable references for understanding the anatomical landmarks and optimizing the interpretation of ultrasound imaging in this context. Neuroaxial structures are situated at a depth that requires the use of low-frequency curvilinear transducers, 2 to 5 MHz, for optimal ultrasound imaging of the spine. While these transducers provide excellent tissue penetration, their spatial resolution diminishes at greater depths. Additionally, Due to the divergent nature of their ultrasound beam, curved array transducers generate a broad field of view, particularly in deeper regions, making them particularly advantageous for spinal imaging. Understanding the different anatomical planes of exploration is essential for the accurate interpretation of ultrasound images. The sagittal plane is a longitudinal plane that runs through the midline, dividing the body into two halves, right and left, it is a vertical plane perpendicular to the ground. The transverse plane, also known as the axial or horizontal plane, is parallel to the ground and divides the body into superior and inferior sections. The coronal plane, also referred to as the frontal plane, is a vertical plane perpendicular to the ground and at a right angle to the sagittal plane, dividing the body into anterior and posterior sections. Neuroaxis imaging can be performed in both the axial and sagittal planes, specifically the paramedian sagittal plane. While there are advocates for each projection method, the reality is that both planes should be used complementarily to obtain a comprehensive view of the neuroaxis. Only the cervical region is suitable for coronal imaging, in addition to axial and sagittal scanning. 